What's up, YouTube? It is your boy, JB, and we are here tonight with another review for Ready to Love. This is season four, right? See, the, the guy says season three, episode 11, but it's season four, episode 11, right? The episode is titled Unfinished Business, you guys. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and pick up. Let's go ahead and get into the review. Pick up. Let's get into the review. Now, before we do that, if you guys are watching this video or any other video on the channel and you're not already subscribed to the channel, what are we doing? Why are we going out on a date and you're not paying for it at the end of it? So, without further ado, let's get into this review, shall we? All right, you guys. So, we pick up where we left off. You guys remember, AJ was sending Kyra home, right? But then he asked her, does she want to stay with him? And AJ tells her, you know, he, you know, um, although he's made his choice, he um, he's going to change it because unlike the rest of the guys, he really is not decided on who he wants between her and um, Flyleaf. So that's where he's at. But he, like I said, he changed his mind and he wants her to stay. So he says that he waited four years for a second date with her and he doesn't want to mess it up. I was like, ah, poor Flyswatter. I actually really felt bad for her. Like I really did. Because the thing with this is, and fly, sweet, fly leaf, fly swatter, you know, all that, that's Alexis, you guys. Now, AJ's big milk dud looking ass. AJ, I've been saying this for weeks. AJ was playing a game with fly trap. He was playing a game with her. Because you guys notice, anytime it would come to, it would come, it would be a week where the ladies would eliminate a guy. He always managed to put the moves on on her, knowing that she was weak and and susceptible, susceptible. Can't even get the word out. She was weak and she would succumb. I couldn't get the other word out. Susceptible. That's it. She was susceptible and would succumb to his advances, and that would sway her vote. So I actually really felt bad for her in that situation because I'm like, damn, she picked you, and then you go back and do this to her. Kyra for this Kyra for so long has wiffle waffle teeter tottered between you and baby teeth but baby teeth is Jason by the way but you go and dump the girl who has always up until this point well even still no Ron was her number one at one point but she and actually in the beginning she liked AJ <sighs> whatever but yeah, he sent Shoe Fly home, and I really felt bad for her. Really did. So then we see the ladies. So the ladies go to Tommy, and he tells the ladies that he wants them to go on their last one-on-one -on -one date. And then this date is for them to, you know, to couple together to see if this is what they actually want. So Kyra tells the ladies that, you know, hey, at first when I met up with AJ, AJ actually wanted to send me home, but AJ changed his mind. Like when Kyra walked in, Liz was surprised, like, Wait a minute. AJ has a better connection with, um, you know, Flosswater. No, he didn't. He was playing her the entire time. She said she wants to talk to Jason. And, you know, um, because he never told her that he picked Liz. We're going to talk about that in just a minute, you guys. Like, I have, I have a bone to pick with him. I know some of you guys have started to like him. Um, I know some of you guys have started to like Baby Teeth. But I got an issue with him. And it might be the same issue that Kyra has with him. But let's move on, you guys. It's on here. All right, you guys. So, Joel and Bernicia. So, they are having their date, right? And it's at her house. So, Joel and Bernicia both talk about the trip. And they talk about how they felt that with the trip, they both gained clarity, right? Now, I'm going to be honest with you guys. When it comes to Joel, I still reserve a bit of a side eye for Joel. And the reason why I still reserve the side eye for Joel is because you guys remember that week that him and Bernicia got into it, he was so quick to pick Kyra. And I'm still stuck on that. Like, what will happen if you guys get into another argument? Will you go to the next chick? Like, that's where I'm at. So, Bernicia tells Joel that there was never a question for her. Like, he was always her number one. But he, she wasn't always his because, again, like I said, that week that they got into it, he was ready to pick Kyra and throw her to the wayside, basically. But at this point, he says that, you know, he wants to try this out and see where it goes. I'm like, well, we at the end now. 
I'm sure you do. So then we see Liz and Baby Teeth, and they're on a date, right? Now it's interesting, so I'm gonna piggyback to what I was just talking about a few minutes ago. So with me, it's interesting when it comes to Baby Teeth, right? You guys remember that episode where Baby Teeth, Liz, and Kyra went bowling with his friends, right? And Liz came in there, you know, dressed, you know, conservative, and Kyra didn't. You guys remember, his friends were talking about they could, they could sense the God in her, right? And in that episode, he said he could see himself picking Kyra. So what's happened between that, that inner counter where your friends could see, see the God in Liz, but now Liz is all of this and she's all of that. Like that's where I'm at with it. So then Liz asked him what would he have done if Kyra had picked him. He says that he would have been there, you know, even if Kyra had said that she wanted to pick him. I'm like, you was a lie. Like, I just don't believe him when he, say, he says that. I really believe that if Kyra had said, you know what, baby teeth, it's you and it's been you from the beginning, he would have dumped Liz by the wayside, especially in that particular little week. In that week when Liz met his friends, if Kyra had said that she wanted him, he would be with Kyra. So then Jason presents her with some white roses. I'm like, oh, so we on The Bachelor now, huh? So he says that, you know, he's only given out roses twice in his lifetime. Once to his, his mother and once to his stepmother. And now he's given Liz, you know, um, some white roses because white represents purity. And he feels that she's pure, which I'll give him that. Liz is definitely a pure, you know, a pure spirit. I'll definitely, definitely give him that one. Um, so, yeah, let's move on to the next day, which confused me as well. All right, you guys, Chris and Amber. Both Chris and Amber walking contradictions so they go out and you know chris asks amber when it comes down to ron has she had any communication with ron she says no she has not had any communication with ron you know she cut off communication with ron after that date and there was nothing there was no you know there was nothing there and that you know at this point she doesn't have you know anybody else that she's going in between she is solely focused on chris right so he tells her that he's ready for kids. He tells her how many kids he wants. I'm like, oh, this is interesting. You never m once mentioned that you wanted kids. Now, Amber, I will say she did say that. Now, remember when she went on that date with Joel, Joel did ask her if she want kids, right? She did say yes, she wanted kids, right? Here's where things got confusing for me with both Chris and Amber. What episode was that? where they went out on that date, right? You guys remember, there was, there was an episode this season where Chris and Amber went out on a date, right? It was with his friends. Was it with his friends when they were in the studio? Because I remember she said she hadn't told her family about him. What date was it? That doesn't matter at this point. Remember, they went out on a date, right? They had, a commun they had um, communications about marriage, right? Remember, Chris said he didn't want to get married, right? And what did Amber say in return? She don't want to get married either. But in this episode, she contradicted herself because she said she wants to be married before she has kids, right? So then Chris says, well, I'm celibate and I'm not going to have sex until I'm what? Married. I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. But both of y'all said that you didn't want to have, you didn't want to get married, but now you guys want to get married? Please make it make sense to me. Like, I just didn't understand it. Now, I will say that Chris, you know, he poured his heart out to her. I did appreciate, I did like that. And Chris, please never tell us again how backed up you are. I don't care about that. So Kyra, Kyra's on a date with AJ, right? She tells AJ that she is in a good space and she wants to move forward with him. Then she asks him, well, where do they stand? I was like, Kyra, where do you stand? He just sent Dragonfly home. Shout out to Misha for that one. He just sent Dragonfly Jones home over you. That's where he stands. He likes you. Honestly, you guys, some of these people are just playing, is playing a game to make it to the end. And I've asked this before. Do they get a big, they, they must get a bigger check to make it to the end of this.
which I'm pretty sure they do, because that's how those stipends work in reality TV, especially like reality, because this is like, let's be real, this is a game show, basically, the longer that they stay in, the longer that they stay on the show, the more money they get, like the reality show Big Brother, they get a stipend, every cast member gets a stipend, the longer you stay in, in the Big Brother house, the bigger that check is. So I, I'm wondering if that's what this is. is. Is this a stipend at the end of the season that the final three will get if you make it to finale night? Hmm. I'm pretty positive that's what it is. It's got to be. Like, I don't feel like these people are really looking for love. And I got to be honest with you guys, Kyra at this point is annoying the entire hell out of me. Let's move on, you guys. All right, you guys. So. The ladies, they meet up with Tommy, right, to discuss the men. So they're telling Tommy about their dates. Amber goes first. She tells about her date and how, you know, Chris opened up. He started crying. I'm like, did he really cry? He said his eyes were trying to sweat. I never once saw it here. But if you say he cried, we'll let you have it. But then she tells them that she's on the fence with Chris because Chris said he's practicing semen retention. And they like semen retention. She's like, yeah, basically he's celibate. So Liz, Liz is on cloud nine with baby teeth. And, you know, she says that baby teeth told her that he picked her weeks ago and Kyra just laughs. And Liz felt some type of way about that. So then Vernicia said that, you know, when it came to her and Joelle, they had a conversation about what happened at the cabin. So then Kyra goes and she tells Liz, like, hey, Liz, like, I wasn't trying to be rude or anything like that when laughing when you said how Jason, that Jason said he picked you weeks ago, because I just feel like that's you know, BS. And I have to agree with Kyra. Like I said a few minutes ago about the whole date when they went to the bowling alley. Baby Teeth had not picked Liz at that point. I don't really know when he picked her. That's the issue. I don't know when Baby Teeth picked her. But um, like I said a few minutes ago, I feel like with that situation with the bowling, you guys remember, he was still team Kyra. And you remember his friends were joking, like I said before, his friends were joking about they can sense the God in Liz. I think he's playing a game and I don't like it because the issue that I have with baby teeth is, like I said, he and Kyra were both in the same situation. You liked Kyra and Liz. Kyra liked you and um and uh, AJ. So what's the big difference? So she feels a way about that. And she felt like Jason was playing a game. And I have to agree with her. I believe he was playing a game. So then we see Kyra. She meets up with Baby Teeth. And she talks to him about the conversation with Liz. Now he tells her he doesn't, you know, he doesn't necessarily remember everything. I'm like, are you serious? This is why I say I feel like he's playing a game with Liz and with Kyra. But he does apologize to her. And the thing with me was he wanted to sit there and put everything squarely on Kyra and I'm like no this is not on Kyra this is on you like I just said a minute ago he's playing a game with them like that's just what I feel let me know what you guys think about that um so then everyone meets up with Tommy before they make their final decisions and Tommy tells him he wants them to go home and meet each other's families I'm like oh good luck with that one and that's the episode you guys so next week is going to be the season finale um let me know in the comment section if you guys would like me to review that show. Put a ring on it. I'll think about it. Um, I don't know what that show is about, but I, I see your preview for it. But let me know if you guys would like me to review that. Um, that's it, you guys. Be sure to like this video. Leave your comments in the comment section below and subscribe to the channel. And hit the notification bell button so you guys are aware of when I drop anything else. Share this video and until the next one, stay safe. Take care of yourselves. Wash your hands. Wear your mask or not. Whichever one you guys do, be safe in doing so. Socially distance and be blessed, you guys, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.